Hello, everyone. A very happy Women's Day to all those present here. I, Mudita Raj, welcome you to Women's Day celebration of DME Media School. Our today's session is an interview come interaction based digital live session. It gives me great pleasure to inform everyone that we are live on our Facebook page. The title of our session today is Inspiring Women Global Faces. Firstly, to introduce Delhi Metropolitan Education, DME. It is an A grade premier in educational institute affiliated to Guru Gobind Singh Indraprast University, New Delhi, and approved by Bar Council of India. The institute offers BBA, BALLB, BBALLB, and BAJMC. DME believes in imparting world class education to its students while training them to develop and enhance their skills. This education and training enables them in taking up challenges of the industry and creating a space for themselves and their competence and vigor. Talking a little about DME Media School, it is one of the most promising media institutes in the country. It offers BA in journalism and mass communication. It is recognized as a school focused on the growth of its faculty and students alike through various academic and co-curricular activities. Major activities of the school include BG Vergi's lecture series, International Film Festival, SIFI, and International Conference, ICANN, the registration for which is open now. We also have a YouTube channel, DME TV, where we post all our activities. I would now request Dr. Sushmita Bala, head DME Media School, to share her thoughts with, with us and formally unveil the event. Ma'am. Thank you, Mudita. Welcome everybody on International Women's Day. DME Media School has organized this event, Inspiring Women Global Faces. This interview come interaction based digital live program has its inspiration from a book, Public Relations, The Changing Global Lens. Featuring 22 distinguished PR professionals of the world. Besides the US based author of this book, Catherine Lencioni, three prominent PR professionals have also joined this session. These professionals include Ms. Pamela Shabi from UK, Rachel Lipson from the US, and Dr. Pooja Arora from India. I welcome all four distinguished women this occasion. I welcome all the participants of this session. Hope everybody will enjoy the deliberation. Let us celebrate collectively. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Today, in our interview come interaction, digital based digital live session, we will be interviewing renowned PR professionals from around the world, featured in the book, Public Relations, The Changing Global Landscape by Ms. Catherine Lancioni. She is a renowned PR professional and a professor at Seton Hall University, New Jersey, United States. Joining her will be global experts from PR industry, Dr. Pooja Arora, Ms. Pamela Shabi, and Ms. Rachel Lipson. Let us now have a glimpse from the life of Catherine.
Catherine Lancioni is an internationally recognized expert in the field of public relations. With more than 25 years of experience in the industry, Ms. Lancioni has a unique appreciation and understanding of its dynamic landscape working as a journalist, public relations ex executive, communication strategist, and a college professor. Ms. Lancioni is the author of three books, Communication Research, Public Relations, The Changing Global Landscape, and The Practice of Public, public Relations. All these books are published by Kendall Hunt. I would now request Dr. Pooja Arora to please introduce the author, Ms. Catherine Lancioni, and her book, Public Relations, The Changing Global Landscape. Ma'am. Thank you, Mudita. Uh, thank you, dear students, teachers, and guests. I am extremely happy and honored to share this virtual platform with Catherine Lancioni. Uh, you know, although Mudita, you've uh, given her brief uh, introduction, but I'll just detail it out slightly. Uh, uh, Catherine Lancioni is an internationally recognized expert in the field of public relations. She's worked with media at the highest levels, taken companies public on the New York Stock Exchange, directed global communications program, counseled clients through monumental crisis, and relaunched lagging brands. In her, er in her earlier career, she had the opportunity to work for some of the world's leading PR agencies, including Edelman, Ogilvy, and Weber Shandwick. After being on the agency side for many years, she moved into the corporate arena, advising both emerging and established organizations. Simultaneously, uh, you know, uh, with her academic, she was also working uh, in the industry. And then Ms. Lancioni has been teaching the nuances of public relations in colleges and universities across the United States. She has guest lectured at Columbia Business School, Cornell University, and Rutgers University, and serves on the advisory council of the entrepreneurship at Cornell University, and on the advisory board of the Market Research Center in the Stillman School of Business of Seton Hall University. Uh, she earned a Bachelor's of Science in Communications from Cornell University and a Master's of Science in Journalism from the Graduate School of Journalism at Columbia University. She's an avid runner, biker, skier, and she enjoys traveling and cooking. She lives outside of New York City with her family. It's an absolute honor to have Ms. Lancioni with us. And on this occasion, I'd also like to give a brief introduction about her book, her book, um, Public Relations, The Changing Global Landscape, looks at predictions related to the future of public relations and digital marketing. It provides an understanding of the quickly changing nature of these industries, as well as insight into the developments on the horizon from the perspectives of the professionals working in it from across the globe. Their expertise of these professionals range from technology and healthcare to crisis management, corporate branding and digital marketing, among others. Each contributor in the book had the opportunity to share their thoughts on the dynamics of the, on the changing dynamics of the industry. And I was also fortunate enough to get this opportunity to share my thoughts on the public relations industry in India. Once again, thank you, Ms. Lancion. Thank you, ma'am. Now, without much delay, I request Dr. Amri Saxena to kindly start with our interview come interaction-based digital session streaming live on Facebook. Sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mudita. Uh, thank you, everybody, and uh, particularly um, uh, Mrs. Lencioni, uh, the way she has been forthcoming uh, when this whole proposal was booted to her, and uh, Pamela, uh, uh, also joined, uh, uh, I mean, and the, and the Rachel also joined, I mean, without any hesitation, uh, which was uh, indeed a matter of pride for us all. And uh, their presence is uh, making this uh, session fruitful and lively. So to begin with, uh, to, to begin my interaction with uh, Catherine. Uh, Catherine, your book, uh, Public Relations, The Changing Global Landscape is all set to hit the market. It uh, holistically represents the market predictions related to the industry and the experience of professional from across the world. 
Uh, you yourself have uh, provided consultations in growing business. So what do you feel? What is the future of the PR industry? Well, first of all, I want to thank you all for having me here today. This for me, you you tell you, you say that it's an honor for you to have me. It's an honor for me to be here. I, and, and Pooja, it's just so lovely to finally meet you in person. Well, somewhat in person. Um, and I hope I get to meet all of you in person someday. So um, again, a huge thanks. So I think the future of the PR industry is very, very strong. What we've seen over the past 20 to 30 years is public, public relations involve from being a single function to being really the communications infrastructure for an organization. And what we're seeing is that PR truly supports and provides guidance and wisdom to all the other communication-based functions in an organization. So whether it's crisis management or public affairs, investor relations or media relations, employee relations, customer relations, PR is the at the communications is really the communication center of all of it. And we drive the messaging, we support the strategy, and many times we even help with the execution of some of these functional areas. So the future is is bright and getting even brighter every day. Uh, your book talks about uh, issues like digital marketing and crisis communication. It also highlights the global scenario of the same. Uh, what, according to you, are some of the challenges and opportunities for PR professionals in this age of social media? So when I first entered the industry a really long time ago, I won't give you the exact year because I'm aging myself. Um, I, uh, I, I, you know, it used to be you would call a reporter or you would email them and you would arrange a sit down face to face conversation. Zoom wasn't around then. And um, you would talk to them about your client or your company that you worked for and you would propose story ideas and you would work with them to develop story ideas and then eventually, hopefully, maybe there would be a story. But what's happened since social media has become so pervasive is that it's sped up everything. It's sped up the PR process and it's sped up what journalists do. So no longer are journalists allowed to take time to really research a story because if they don't get the details out, someone else will. So there used to be this race to research and this race to, 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 get, to get fully submerged in a news story. But what's happened now is there's just a race to report. So what that means for us as PR professionals is our job has changed. So we have to put together the whole package before going to the journalist. We have to pitch it in a way that's fast and furious. And most importantly, we have to realize that our journalists are underneath or are behind a tremendous, tremendous amount of pressure to get their stories out. So no longer can they uh, take time to get to know a lot of companies. They truly have to report on what they see and move on to the next piece. So it's sped up the pace of everything for everyone. And it's made it a lot harder, honestly. And if we talk about branding, what will you say how this uh, branding has evolved over the time? Um, branding has gone from something that was more of a corporate function to something that's much more of an individual function. And it used to be something that we as people or communications professionals working for organizations looked to the outside world to help us with. But what's happened with social media is anybody can develop a brand, right? The whole concept of the influencer. Those are people that are just like any of us who use social media in some way, some way shape or form to develop their brand and to be in many, many ways, very, very influential. Um, and what's also happened with branding is we've had now different tiers of branding and back to the influencer, we have things like called a micro influencer, right? People that appeal to a certain subsection of a market. So for an organization, rather than just looking at their brand holistically, what's happening now is companies are looking at their brand almost in, in terms of segments. And they're saying, okay, this is who we are in general, but then this is who we can be to these, to these individual audiences. And it's social media that's enabling them to translate that brand to fit each of these constituencies. So uh, today we are uh, observing International Women's Day. So let us talk about women in the PR industry. Uh, they often face uh, this whole glass ceiling. Uh, at least uh, we find this uh, in developing countries like India. Uh, what do you feel? What is actually the scenario at the global level as far as uh, uh, this particular issue is concerned? 
So let me, um, I found some pretty interesting statistics about this because um, I knew this is, is going to be an interesting topic for all of us. So this is from an article uh, that appeared in PR Week, late 2019. So their data is from the Institute for Women's Policy. And in the US, 59% of all PR managers are women. 63% of all PR specialists um, are women. 73% of all PRSA members, which is the Public Relations Society of America, are women. 75% of jobs in PR are occupied by women, but only 30% of global PR firms are run by women. So you see there's this big disconnect between the number of women that are in the industry and the number of women that are in executive ranks. And I, I can tell you in all of the agencies that I've worked in over the years and in all of the companies I've counseled over the years, um, at least at all the agencies, all the leaders were, were men. Um, all of my direct bosses were men. So anyone that had sort of the senior vice president title and up was a man and everybody that was below that was a woman, but it's changing. And that's the really, really good thing. Um, and we're seeing that changing in business in general in the United States. Uh, sad, it's still sad. Only 7.4% of the Fortune 500 CEOs are women, but that's up from just 4% a couple of years ago. So the ceiling is, is I guess, getting shattered. The ceiling is evolving. The ceiling is changing for women in a really good way, but it's going to take time. Uh, but I'm happy to see that, you know, I've been in this industry for you know, a long time, that we are getting more senior roles. And what's also happening is that more women like Rachel Lipson, who's on this, call, on this uh, panel today, we're forming our own businesses. And that's, it's a really great thing for us to be able to do. Women are empowered to lead. And if we can't lead in agencies, we're creating our own agencies. And what will be your advice to young women professionals who are entering the PR industry? Well, there, there's, there's a couple that my students always ask me that. They're like, Professor Lancioni, so what are the words of wisdom that you have for us in PR? And uh, I always say there's, 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 well, there's two things really. Is that if you're a PR person, you have to be humble, right? And it's ir ironic because we're in the industry of promoting people and promoting brands and promoting things. But one of the things that I learned very, very early on was that you have to be humble because um, it's just so incredibly important because of all the things that you see and all the people that you meet. Um, so you need to be, there needs to be a sense of humility from the time that you enter the industry. Um, and you also have to, I think, be strong and have a thick skin because um, there are going to be people that are going to be very competitive to you. And they may be women or they may be men and they may, may be you know, external forces that you don't realize. And so it's important that you know yourself, that you have that sense of humility and that you sort of take those, those, those understandings and leverage them to help motivate you and help drive you. But again, in a very humble and kind way. Uh, taking back again to you to the social media earlier also we referred to the social media and uh, in, in the time of the social media feedback and the word of mouth uh, this cannot be controlled and then professionals have always been on their toes so how far do you feel that this can be controlled and uh, what will be your advice to professionals uh, I mean as far as dealing with the uh, social media is concerned uh, particularly in reference to crisis communication so we talk a lot about this whole uh, relationship in this book and in, in another book that I have coming out, actually, I think it's coming out this week or next week, which is called The Practice of Public Relations. Um, there, there's the challenge right now is that if a company or organization or person who's ever facing a crisis doesn't get out in front of the story, the story will write itself. So what that means, as you, as a PR professional for an organization, need to help drive the message and you need to help craft the message. And the best way to do that is through social media. Because as we know, what, if you put something on a social media platform, it's out there. People start to see it the moment it drops. So to control a crisis, you have to get ahead of a crisis. And the platform to do that with is social media.
But the challenge is that in trying to control the message, a lot of companies rush with the details. And the most important thing in crisis, regardless of what platform you use to control it, is that you stick to the facts and you report only what you know to be true. And what we've seen time and time and time again, be it the Malaysian airline crisis, be it the Samsung phone crisis, be it any crisis you pick, is that when the, the, the wrong facts are put out there or when the company doesn't respond quickly enough, the public panics and the public starts to write the message. So the relationship is an awesome one and a dynamic one because social media allows you to get that story out there. It allows you to get feedback on what the people think of your message, but it also can be really hard to control if you don't put the right facts and right messages to support what's going on. And again, the most important thing is that those messages and facts be true. Crisis and social media are not a place to, to put any falsehoods. Yeah, so Catherine, we already talked about the women participation in the PR industry, and uh, as you yourself provided the statistics that it's uh, on the rise. Uh, though uh, I believe uh, the situation may not be the same in uh, different parts of the country, what do you foresee? I mean, what will be the women participation in the PR industry in the time to come? And this I'm asking, taking the situation, different situations in different parts of the world, particularly uh, in view of the developing countries and the developed countries. Yeah, in the book, we have, um, it's 28 PR professionals from around the world, and the majority of them are women. And, um, you know, we have uh, four people from, from India and, and Dr. Pooja is one of them. We have a woman from Australia. We have a woman from Kazakhstan. We have a woman from um, the UAE. Uh, we have women from all over the world. And if that is indicative of our role in the industry globally, then it's fantastic. Um, I think public relations has always, and communications in general, has always been a field that women dominate but it's starting to be a field where women lead. And it, as a woman in the field, that's incredibly exciting. Um, and I think that, you know, it's one we, where we will continue to lead and continue to make strides because globally, uh, I believe there's more focus on empowering women. And also it's important to, to talk about this in here is also diversity. And I think that in the PR industry, you were seeing a huge push globally to employ, employ more women and also to employ a more global, diverse workforce. Um, I know that's one of the things that we talk about all the time in my classroom is the importance of diversity and, and the importance of um, multiculturalism in PR campaigns and the importance of uh, you know, cultural diffusion. And some of the greatest crises in public relations happen when people are ignorant and happen when people do not take into account other people's customs. And so, you know, women, I think our role is strong. We've always been in this field, but we're starting to lead this field, which is incredibly exciting. Is change gonna happen overnight? No, absolutely not, right? Change takes time. It's, it happens that way any, in any industry, but I think we're starting to see that change and we're starting to see that change in the corporate arena globally. And we're starting to see it in the agency side globally. And that to me is really exciting, especially for someone who, when I started in this field, a long time ago, it was men at the top, women in the middle and women in the bottom. But what we're getting now is we're getting women and men at the top and we still have women in the middle and women at the bottom. So it's an exciting time for public relations and women. Yeah. So, Catherine, uh, my last question to you will be uh, talking about uh, the book that you have uh, authored, Public Relations, The Changing Global Landscape. From where this idea came to your mind that this kind of book uh, uh, needs to be written and how did you decide it or who all are to be included in this book? Oh, my goodness. So I, I will tell you the reality of of. So, so Dr. Pooja told you that I'm an avid runner. Okay, I run, I, and I've, you know, I've run in, in races all over the world. Actually, one of the best ones I did was the Easter race, in, Easter race in London a couple of years ago, when we could all travel globally. Um, and uh, so, I, the, the idea for the book, the original book, was you're right before COVID, about over a little, a little over a year ago, January of 2020, and I wanted to write a book. 
um, that talked about public relations from the practitioner standpoint, my own perspective, because I, I felt like, or I realized that however you wanna look at it, um, that PR in our role is so incredibly important and so undervalued. Most people think of PR as something that happens in a silo when our, our, our effect is so much more, uh, it's so much bigger than that. So originally this book was going to be part three of the bigger textbook. So the big textbook is called um, The Practice of Public Relations. And that's the one that's coming out next week. And in that one, we introduce a new model for looking at PR. And the idea is that public relations is in the center and that we have the seven communications functions that are in an organization or that are in or most nonprofits that have a dynamic relationship with PR. So an example is investor relations. Another example is public affairs. So we help them decipher messages for their audiences. We help them monitor um, what's going on in the markets, what's going on with the competition. We provide talking points, we provide media training. They don't do that themselves, they do it with us. And so that was the original idea for the book. And I figured I would have this third section that looked at the international PR market. So I reached out to a couple of friends. I reached out to some people through LinkedIn. And I think Dr. Puja was one of the original, the original 12, as I call them. And what we, what I, I, I would say, I would say it's we, but what I realized was that there was an opportunity to make this its own book. And what, what gave me that idea was the, the, the ideas, the, what the contributors were saying. It was so incredibly interesting to see how Dr. Puja's um, thoughts from India were very similar, but yet different to some of the people from the US and how their ideas were similar, but again, slightly different from you know, the people in, in the UK, for example. So I approached the publisher and said, look, I think this has merit to be its own book. And they love the book because it, there's so much original content. So they gave us, they gave me the blessing to, to go with the two books. Um, and I will admit it got a little nutty working on two books at the same time. Um, but uh, I'm thrilled that we did this and we're already getting a request to do a second edition for next year to expand uh, the number of contributors, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm hoping to make it something that people um, look forward to coming out and that you know really want to be in. Um, because I think it's so interesting to see the similarities and the differences between PR practitioners from around the world. So uh, the idea came from just seeing the content and realizing what we had and what it could be. And, um, and I have to say, I think I say this in the, in the preface of the book, this was one of the most fun projects I've ever worked on because I, I feel like I have like 25 new friends around the world. Dr. Pooja is one of them, Pamela is another one of them, um, Rachel's another one of them. I've never actually met any of these women in person, but we all just met actually through LinkedIn. We all met through LinkedIn and they've been so incredibly wonderful in, in helping me with this. Um, it's been, I mean, it's been great. I work and I, you know, it's, it's so nice to see it. Cause I, I it was, it was a lot of time. Um, and I was just absolutely delighted when you guys asked me to come on and speak today. Cause it's really mm -hmm. nice to see that the book has, um, has been inspirational to people. So I, I you know, again, really, really uh, appreciate being here. Uh, with you today. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine, for talking to us and for uh, giving so much insight uh, about the industry, about the professionals. So it is uh, definitely a very, very soothing experience, very enlightening experience for us all, those who are in this session. And I must tell you this and tell everybody, uh, the students uh, have joined this session in large number. Most of them are studying their uh, PR paper in the semester, which they are undergoing. Even junior students are there who will be taking up this uh, PR in the uh, coming semesters. So it uh, would definitely be having a very beneficial official uh, experience for all the participants in this session. So moving on, I hand it over to Mudita. Thank you, sir. Uh, Miss, I'm, thank you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Lassioni. I am sure your answers have motivated and given industry insights to all the students present in the session. 
Talking about the book Public Relations, The Changing Global Landscape, I would just like to add to the discussion that this book brings, brings and bridges theory and statistics with the global industry practices and brings out a holistic approach of the global industry forward to its for its readers. I now hand over the forum to Dr. Manaspi Maheshwari, Associate Professor, DME Media School. Ma'am. Thank you, Mudita. Thank you, Catherine and Professor Saxena, for such an interesting session. I'm sure we all had something to learn from it. And, you know, a lot of things are there which we wanted to share with the students. But with the experts like you coming here has made our, you know, has made our job easy. Thank you so much. Now, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce you to another PR expert who is present with us today, Dr. Pooja Aroda. Dr. Aroda works as a public relations and corporate communication professional at a PR firm in India. With an industry experience of over 11 years in varied sectors, Dr. Aroda understands what drives good stories and what helps in managing negative ones. She holds a doctoral degree in journalism and mass communication with a specialization in PR. In addition to her industry work, Dr. Aroda is also contributing in the area of academics and has been teaching the nuances of public relations to undergraduate students studying at DME Media School since year 2020. Now I request Dr. Aroda to share her experiences with all of us today. Thank you, Dr. Manasvi. Um, thank you, uh, Ms. Lancioni, once again, your views were very insightful. And uh, thank you, DME, Dr. Amrish Saxena, Dr. Sushmita Bala for organizing this session. Uh, dear students, teachers, and guests, uh, you know, I would like to start with uh, how I got into public relations. Very briefly, I won't really bore you, but um, you know, so I was always keen into interacting, into interacting with new people, you know, writing stuff, and uh, have always been intrigued by the power of media, social media, images, uh, you know, inspirational stories. So when I was pursuing uh, pursuing my undergrad in psychology, I took organizational behavior as one of my specializations as I was deeply interested to develop an understanding around how organizations establish a strong and trusting relationship with their respective stakeholders. So uh, this is when I actually started reading about public relations and also did my master's in mass communication later. But, but the real power or the thing that I actually realized the power of public relations was when uh, you know I actually Got on, got on doing the job or basically the thing that you say that learning by doing the concept of that. So when I started doing my internship or the job so during my journey, it was then, you know, that I understood that PR managers are storytellers. They are the guardians of a brand's image. You know, when I say guardians, I mean, they protect the brand's image whenever there is a crisis or a negative story. And obviously, uh, Ms. Lancioni has uh, elaborated on that. Then they, and as brand guardians, they try and keep the brand in news in a positive manner, consistent, you know, and uh, over the years, PR industry has evolved and it has become even more relevant than ever before. Uh, like a decade back, uh, large organizations were typically, and I'm just talking about India right now, were the ones who typically hired PR professionals, but now, it is like small, medium, large size organization. You know, everyone is, uh, everyone needs PR support. The scenario has completely changed. And after the pandemic strike, you know, the, the organization started asking for stories in both traditional and online media. So by traditional, I mean print, radio, TV, and by digital, I mean blogs, videos, social media, online stories. And before the pandemic, specifically in India, you know, uh, online stories were not really uh, looked as, uh, you know, something that organization wanted. It was like, okay, by the way, you know, we can have an online story, that's okay. But now the importance of an online story and online medium, social media, all of that has increased. Um, also, uh, you know, pre-COVID, the thing that was, that was really important in relationship building was the media rounds or meeting the journalists on a regular basis. That was something that really helped, like a face-to-face -face conversation can do wonders in relationship building. But uh, unfortunately, after the pandemic, you know, things have 
slightly changed but i'm hoping that you know with when things get, get back to normal you know maybe this aspect will uh, get back but then you know the good thing is that the pr tools like press releases press notes conferences they all continue to still be relevant you know and and i'm sure this is going to continue for many more years to come and um, i think uh, another aspect is that pr professionals are expected to be storytellers because you know the competition hasn't gone down because of the pandemic the competition is still there so they 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 need to their story or the pitch whatever they do they, that needs to stand out also social media has only enhanced the mediums of coverage so uh, uh but the story still needs to be strong so that is the thing but you know uh, to conclude i'll talk about the five things that i strongly believe in and i called it the create approach okay and this is something that i have made up so you know it's for the the easy understanding of the students so c stands for communication skills okay one needs to hone their communication skills and one needs to make sure that you know you are comfortable in reading writing on a regular basis and even if you think that you're not a great writer but you have the willingness to learn uh, you'll definitely succeed in this uh, uh, you know career and uh, it's not just about press releases there's a lot more that happens in public relations uh, you have to write an impressive pitch you have to write speeches on behalf of spokesperson you have to script videos you have to create infographics a lot a lot of things happen as part of the communication you have to also be a good listener uh, listening skills are are actually uh, a lot ignored uh, because you know people just consider reading and writing but if you if you're not able to listen properly to the client's brief or to the organization's brief then you know there'll be uh, uh, miscommunication or gaps second uh in the create approach is r so r stands for research research is another important thing to do before one actually starts getting down to writing about an organization it is important to know the background of the organization and also about the competition what they are up to you know just to create and devise a strategy for the organization and obviously if if you're uh, addressing a speech or if you're addressing uh, your stakeholders internal or external stakeholders you need to know them better so that research is very important in every aspect third uh, pr is earned media so in create the e stands for the earned media it is editorial it is not advertising you know while while advertising tends to uh, tend to have a big bang and uh, it can have an immediate effect uh, on the brand's image but public relation is is i mean it takes us it's a it's a long process but then it has greater value greater credibility in the eyes of the consumers fourth is agility you know uh one needs to be responsive one needs to be flexible in their style of working in this field so for example uh you know this happens with me many a times so if if one if you know you have a weekend and a journalist reaches out to you at the last minute for a comment for a from a spokesperson from your organization you can't simply ignore it given that it's a weekend a pr person always believe in supporting the journalists in finishing their story and one needs to be flexible in their working style so that's what i mean by agility uh the number 5 and the last thing and obviously there are many more but this is as part of this approach that i was talking about is timeliness or the time management skills you know there are uh, you, as a pr person it's important to be in the good books of the journalists and one needs to understand that they are always and always hard pressed for time you know so they want to get the information from you as quickly as possible maybe they have not done their research properly and they are just looking out for every source of information from you so how quickly you actually give the information uh, and ensure that the information is not a stale news or an ages old news is and you know and considering it should be very topical and relevant is something that comes under timeliness so uh, i would just say in the end that students who wish to actually get into pr the future is really bright thank you very much thank you so much dr aroda thank you pleasure thank you it was indeed and very you know uh, you actually shared the real secrets of the pr uh, profession so i'm sure we all have many things to learn from this session 
Okay, so our next guest of the evening is versatile PR expert, Ms. Pamela Shavi. Pamela has over 20 years in public relations and corporate communications work experience, working in a variety of industries and sectors. She has worked with PR agency and in-house also. Pamela has also worked for the UK government and UK public health and provided crisis communication plans for the government. Having lived in US and Europe for so many years, speaking three languages, she is a passionate about global health and tech communication. Now I invite Professor Saxena to explore the unexplored with Ms. Pamela. Uh, thank you, Manasvi. Uh, welcome, Pamela, uh, to this uh, session. Uh, my first question will be, I mean, very, very obvious since uh, uh, we picked up this idea of organizing the session based on the book on this public relations written by Catherine. So my first question to you will be that in this book, Public, public Relations, The Changing Global Landscape, uh, how do you feel uh, of this acknowledgement that has been given to you by featuring you in this book? Well, um, good morning to people from uh, the US and good evening to everybody from Delhi. It's a real great honor to be part of this on Women's Independence Day. And first of all, I'd like to thank very much everybody from the Delhi Media School and also Catherine for giving me this opportunity. It's absolutely wonderful. I feel very honored and flattered to be part of this. Um, I hope that my experience will help future students and I'm really looking forward to the future of PR. So for me it's been a heartfelt wonderful journey working with Catherine and also working with everyone from the Delhi Media School. It's great that you've put this together. Your all your hard work and everything is just wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. So I would like you to know, I mean, if you look at your journey in the making of a PR professional, how will you narrate this to us? Well, actually, and my journey, I fell into PR. It was actually, um, I fell into PR, my love of antiques and art. I started out actually doing PR for um, a property company here in the UK that managed antique centers. So um, I don't know if everyone's familiar, it's like Portobello Market, it's um, the, the trendy King's Road, it was called Antiquarius, which we're now many, many years ago now, <laughs> my age is coming through. But it was, it was a very hip place. If I compare it to New York, if you say Chelsea or, or Soho, it was an eclectic place to be. You know, you would always see Vivian Westwood in the street because her shop was there and her uh, Bob Geldof from La Live Aid. I mean, it was a very sort of hip place to be. And it was great because I, I worked with fashion stylists. They used a lot of the antiques for props. We also had dealers that specialized in, you know, beautiful 1920 shawls, beautiful clothes. So I was very fortunate. I actually started working in the fashion, working with the likes of, you know, Vogue, Harpers and Queen, um, Tatler, and it was great, you know, um, you know, they would come and choose props and things like that. So I worked with them and I, I greatly enjoyed my time there. And it also, I, I, I had a background in art history. So for me, it was fantastic being around such beautiful things. But I did feel that I wanted to get more into a business environment. So then I moved into an agency that specialized in the dot-com industry, which was quite a long time ago. <laughs> Um, so they were basically startups, uh, startups in the dot com. So we would get entrepreneurs who graduated from Harvard or from Cornell or from the London School of uh, Business and Economics. And they'd have this great business plan of how they were going to create lots of money and have this beautiful dot com industry and everything like that. So we really worked with them um, to secure their seed funding in order to basically, you know, we worked with the likes of Bloomberg and Reuters to try and get some more funding for them. And then our, our next job was really to do customer acquisition, which I absolutely loved because you're working with the entrepreneur. We were doing uh, cross global communications. We were managing, we were the lead agency managing other PR agencies around the world. Um, a lot of them have sort of faltered come dot you know, the, the, the dot com bust, but a lot of them are still actually working in the industry. So that was quite good for me. So, um, yeah, so, and then later I really moved into 
financial services, healthcare and technology. So that's really been my journey at the moment. Yeah, so Pamela, but uh, if I ask you to, 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 to put your challenges uh, the, all through your career, what kind of challenges you faced actually? Well, I think even pre-COVID, we were very much with social media and digital marketing, we're very much moving into that field. And I think it's important to keep abreast of everything that's happening. I mean, every five seconds, there's a new social media channel. And I think it's important to, you know, um, you know, PR people now are expected to have design techniques in design to do, um, you know, e-newsletters. So I think it's very important to keep abreast with all of these technological you know advances and also it's great in terms of the book that actually Catherine's done because it's in a digital format which is absolutely wonderful that this can be you know in the next five or ten years it actually can be changed with with what's happening in the PR industry and I think that's one of the great things you know that Catherine when I said to her oh it's an ebook and she said to me yes so we can actually work you know change it which is very very important because i think it's a very very exciting time for for pr and i think we are expected now to be more of communication people rather than just solely pr it's the whole matrix so i think for me it's really the digital landscape that has really created it's created a great challenge and a great thrust for for knowledge for my part you know i didn't grow up in this digital age I won't say well, you know, I mean, we didn't have Zoom, just like Catherine said and stuff like that. So for me, it's it's great being in this environment. And, you know, post COVID, you know, I think a lot more things will be involving in that technological world. Yeah. Uh, so, Pamela, there would have been certainly some landmarks in your career. So how can you narrate or how, how can you underline those achievements that you would have uh, achieved at uh, different points of time in your career? Well, I think um, working for UK Public Health was really my, 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 I mean, I've worked a lot uh, for the government crisis communication, but I think this, this is quite sort of, what's the word, um, important because it, I, at the time I was dealing with a virus called SARS, which I'm not too sure what everybody was. It's basically a virus like COVID. Um, and I was really thrown into the deep end. I have no a uh, scientific background at all, no background into viruses. I didn't know anything about it. And the head of the um, PR department or, or communications was going on a six week sabbatical and SARS had hit the country. So there was this huge, you know, interest and we had to, I had to come to grips very, very quickly because I was thrown in the deep end as to what is a makeup of a virus, work with the scientists, work with the researchers, work with healthcare professionals, work with GPs, because it, it, it taken us by storm. I mean, luckily, you know, it was not as bad as, as what's happened with COVID, but it, there were, unfortunately, I know Canada suffered greatly. There were casualties of it. Uh, and again, unfortunately it happened, you know, in China, um, you know, with a civet cat and it was cross contamination you know, things like that. And also working with a virus, it, it, they can be very te temperamental. And I was working really around the clock um, because I was working in a laboratory in the UK in London that was designated by the WHO to help and research in terms of finding antidotes and to help with the virus. So we had camera crews on, you know, bids all camera crews from you know abroad from the UK wanting to speak to the epidemiologists about it and I think um, you know there was so much um, worry and scared the whole of Chinatown was deserted people were so worried about eating Chinese food in case they might catch it you know so I worked very closely with the Chinese community to um, you know, to help them in terms of understanding, you know, they would watch Hong Kong TV. Why was everybody wearing masks in Hong Kong? Why weren't we wearing masks in the UK? Which is really quite funny now, because <laughs> we're all wearing masks. But there was a huge misconception and understanding about it all. And I produced a communication strategy 
which I basically, um, it was called, you know, SARS uh, for the UK Chinese community. It was really aimed at the Chinese community and building up trust among the UK in terms of going to Chinatown eating Chinese food, you're not gonna get it if you eat Chinese food. Um, and it was presented at the International Conference uh, on Communicable Diseases. And, you know, I was actually commended on it because it sort of was very, very um, simple in terms of its direction and how it was explained to the public. So for me, I suppose that that is my main achievement and my main sort of, um, uh, yeah. sort of success, <laughs> if you like. Uh, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Pamela, for talking to us and for providing such such insight. Very, I mean, with the help of such uh, recent things, with which uh, we all have been coming across, and obviously the future PR professionals they would have got some idea what kind of challenges they might be into once they join the PR industry. Thank you. Uh, over to uh, Dr. Marasi. Thank you both of you for such an informative session. We at DME are honored to host such a distinguished guest and thankful to you for making this day a special one and memorable one for all of us. So now I move to our next, next expert and I'm happy to introduce you to our special guest, Ms. Rachel Lipson. Rachel is a recognized communications leader providing strategic counsel and creative thinking with deep expertise in the healthcare sector. Rachel currently manages her own consultancy with clients in the healthcare, technology, and consumer products industries, where she and her team of specialists thrive on learning, problem solving, and communicating complex information. I invite, once again, invite Professor Saxena to conduct a captivating session with Ms. Rachel. Uh, thank, thank you, Dr. Madasi. Uh, welcome, uh, Rachel, to this uh, session. Uh, you have been very patiently listening to others, but now we all want to listen to you. Uh, so starting uh, interaction with you, I will start with the same question. I, we all would like to know about your journey as a PR professional. Sure. Well, I'll say, I'll also say thank you so much for this great opportunity. And I'm really thrilled to be here today, especially in light of International Women's Day and to meet all these amazing people. Um, and thank you so much, Catherine, for including me. Um, it's been a great opportunity. I'm always, I'm always, you know, I feel like life is only interesting if we're always pushing ourselves and learning new things and there's no time to be bored. <laughs> um, luckily in this industry, we're never bored <laughs> because if you're bored, there's a problem. There's always an opportunity to be learning, which is I think why I'm here today and why I've continued for 20 years to be committed to learning and growing in this industry. I started off um, doing PR because really I loved writing. As a child, I was always writing news articles. And in seventh grade, I was an editor of our school newspaper. And I, I went to journalism school. I got interested in writing and continued on a path to journalism with all my internships, but then my final senior year ended up doing this community and government relations through Yale University. And I just really fell in love with that whole element um, and which obviously took me into PR today. So I worked for large agencies like Edelman and Ogilvy. I also worked for smaller boutique agencies. I started off doing fashion PR. <laughs> so kind of similar to you, Pamela. And then after a couple of years, I really wanted something more challenging from a business um, organizational kind of opportunity. So I ended up going to work for a bigger firm and going into the healthcare department. And, and really that has led me to where I am today. And, you know, it's very different, but I will say, you know, you started off writing press releases and pitching media. I worked with a, a green catalog of media contacts where I would pull those contacts, which is something that you guys don't even, will probably never know, the O'Dwyer's book. That's really dating myself, but that's where I started. And even though there was email, most of it was done via phone. And clearly, as we've all talked about that, you know, time has changed. You know, here we are over 20 years later, everything is digital. Um, you know, we're now pitching reporters on Twitter and LinkedIn um, just as much as we're emailing them. But, you know, it's amazing, you know, the digital role. Um, but, you know, after many years of working for the big firms and working for big companies in pharma, 
um, working on brand communications, corporate communications, internal communications. I loved it, but I always had sort of a pull to become my own business owner. And it's always been a tough decision. You know, it's a tough decision to make um, because there's something nice about working for a big firm and having the resources and having lots of people and minds to tap into, big, large teams. Um, and I did work as a consultant for many years with all those firms and continue to kind of have those minds to tap into. But then I sort of, over the last three to four years, have really grown my business and become more directly to clients and not working really with agencies anymore as a consultant. And in fact, have grown my team to, there are five of us now, working across um, a mix of healthcare and technology clients. Um, and we do a lot of, you know, a lot of interesting work. And I guess, you know, a lot of this is, you know, it's interesting, you know, where we started off in PR, all of us, and where we are today is much different. PR really has much more of a broader role. Um, and I, you know, we're communicators, we're storytellers, as we've all said. Um, and a lot of the work we do is really telling that story to the various audiences and it changes. Um, so anyway, I'm going on, but. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so you have been working with different sectors, with different company and uh, working in diverse uh, atmosphere. So during this whole journey, what kind of problems or the challenges you met with? During my school journey? No, as a professional. Oh, as a professional. Sorry. Yeah. So I think, I think the biggest challenge I would say is the amount of work that needs to get done and the time. Everything in the business PR or communication world, especially today, is moving so quickly. So the ability to get up to speed very quickly, to learn and to understand the, your client, the challenges they're facing, their competition, and then to respond quickly and swiftly and accurately and concisely and to speak well is a challenge and a skill set that takes many years to develop. And you may go into it at first and think, this is really, this is tough. This might not be for me, but it's a challenge. And as you work harder and you don't give up and you try to, you know, surround yourself by people to support you on your team, you can learn and develop this skill. Yeah. So, I mean, if I ask you, what are your future plans? I mean, uh, you have done a lot of work, but then you would have thought about some, some goals that are yet to be achieved what will you say about that right now like my first immediate goals are really to to really continue to grow my business to really bring on clients that we, we really want as a company to serve and to help and to support and to partner with companies we really believe in who are really doing innovative things you know i really have i think the shift from PR, you know, when we talk about what PR was when I first started to what I'm doing today, especially in this world of COVID, is really changed and it's become really um, important. And so a big role of what we've been doing with a lot of our clients has not necessarily even been promoting products and promoting them as a company, but really showing and helping their employees, communicating to their employees, which has been really interesting and a kind of a shift. Um, and so we've worked a lot with, obviously, with the COVID communications, all this, how it's impacting employees. Obviously, jobs are changing. Pay, pay might be changing. There's so many challenges. So really um, working from the inside out. And then also, obviously, you know, the interesting opportunity today that I think has, um, you know, that I like to be more of a part of is, is companies not just necessarily, again, selling their product, but really how are they helping society? What are they doing? Um, you know, and all these issues that we, we were facing today, there's a multitude of them. Um, not just that they support it, but what are they really doing and helping them tell their stories and even helping them get involved in what those causes might be. So, you know, where I wanna be is to really, to work with those companies and have those opportunities to do those really creative, unique things that really do tie back to communications and public relations. And, and talking about the book, uh, Public Relations, The Changing Global Landscape, you have been featured in this book. How do you feel about this acknowledgement? I'm thrilled and honored to be a part of it. I, I read the book, I'll read it again, I'm sure, and I'll probably refer to it. 
you know, a lot because there's a lot of great, um, interesting perspectives. And we're all saying similar, but yet different things. And we all have different experiences because again, PR is such a broad field and, and it varies from industry to stakeholder group to obviously geography. So that's the interesting part, but the book is fantastic. I'm definitely going to make everyone on my team be reading it and using it. And um, I'm excited to, to read the next one. Uh, thank you, Rachel. Uh, so thank now you. we uh, move on further and uh, this is over to you, Dr. Manasri. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Rachel, for highlighting the recent trends in PR sector. It was a pleasure to host such a thought-provoking and inspiring session. We are looking forward to get the hold of the book now, which has brought us all together at this platform. Uh, now I hand over it to Ms. Krishna Pandey, a senior PR faculty at DME Media School, to take up the queries of the audiences. Krishna, ma'am. Unmute ka liye, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Maneswini, ma'am. Um, it is indeed a pleasure to be part of this uh, August gathering and uh, to meet so many experts and to hear them. And of course, uh, we have some really interesting questions from the students. And one of my students, Priya Yadav, is asking this question, how can PR contribute to the sales function during this time of crisis when best of the strategies are failing in pulling the customers into buying a product or service? I think this question is addressed to Catherine. Thank you for that question. So it's, it's interesting you bring that up. Um, Pamela, Rachel, and I all touched on this, that the role of PR is earned media, which means stories in, on websites, in magazines, in newspapers, on, on broadcast networks. And what research is showing, specifically research done by Nielsen Research, which is a global uh, market research agency, is that there's a huge connection between earned media and the consumer buying process. And that in fact, um, consumers go through a pre, there's three parts to the consumer buying process. This is a little bit of marketing, but, it, but marketing and PR are coming together. One of the things we talk about in the books, so and we'll talk about it right here. So what happens is when someone is considering a purchase, they usually look for validation. They, they do research to, to learn more about it. And if they see a story or an article or a review or a blog post about that product or service, when they're initially thinking about buying it or looking at it or experiencing it, there's a greater likelihood as much as 88%, according to Nielsen, that they will ultimately buy the product or engage the service. So there is an absolutely huge connection between public relations and the sales function. And what we're seeing is that public relations is becoming or is more influential than advertising in terms of getting consumers to buy a product or, or purchase a service. Um. This uh, second question, I think I, I think the student wants to be addressed to both Pamela and Rachel. And uh, the question is, how do you see the use of PR as a tool for propaganda to achieve political gains in the West, especially in US? The role of PR as a propaganda. Yeah, Pamela, you can. The question is addressed to both Pamela as well as uh, Rachel. Okay, I mean, I'm sort of perhaps uh, Rachel's better with the US. In terms of the UK, it's been used very, very strongly to change um, government opinion um, with uh, a lot of surveys and things like that. So uh, a PR has a tool greatly to change perceptions and change attitudes, you know, and to, you know, to do propaganda in the country. I'm not too familiar with the US, but in the UK, we've used it greatly. I mean, you know, with the social media, for instance, I mean, you know, this whole thing that, uh, for instance, I'll give you an example quickly about London. They were planning to, uh, you know, to do the extension of Heathrow Airport. They'd have to demolish a lot of houses. There was a whole public consultation about it rather than moving it out of London where they're not gonna do it. So they engaged with PR, they engaged stakeholders and they changed a lot of the view about not making the, a, a, another runway there 
or perhaps making a shorter runway. So there is a lot in terms of, of propaganda and tell, ha, helping with sort of issues around the community and things like that. Uh, this was a question from uh, Mr. Mank uh, Vesh. Muskan Baveza uh, is also asking a question and she uh, wants to know that there have been a lot of examples that have shown PR uh, using a public relation as about uh, cleaning of dirty laundry or cover up for some gross blunder committed by a company. So if PR manages it, it is a case of good crisis communication, but ultimately it is not, it's nothing but hiding the truth uh, in the wheel of strategic communication. What is your take on it? I that think Rachel can take up this question. Yeah, Rachel, if you were- if Sure, you can. no problem. So I think, um, yes, I mean, I think sometimes that is the reputation and, and I think there has been a shift. I mean, I think we, we're seeing it more and more that, you know, honesty, truth telling, transparency is definitely rising. And I think that you see more companies and more executives and more leaders being more authentic and genuine and in, in telling, you know, especially today, we're seeing more and more of it. Um, I think that that's the way we counsel our clients is really, you know, people are going to have, the public's going to have questions and we really need to anticipate what those questions are and how can we answer them in the most genuine way. And I mean, obviously we know that there's, we're messaging and we're helping guide them on their storytelling, but definitely I think there's a shift in getting people to be much more truthful than, not that everyone, not that we were, you know, not that they were lying before, but it's, it's definitely being more detailed, <laughs> providing more meat, <laughs> less of just the statement. Let me just add on to what Rachel was saying. So sure. from an academic standpoint, there are two theories that really go to this and underscore what Rachel's talking about. The most well-known one is uh, William Benoit's image repair theory. And what he did was um, he looks at the way that people and organizations um, try to repair their image and apologize. And his theory was so pervasive and so in-depth that um, it's actually been factored into a lot of crisis communication theory. Um, there's something in this kind of dove, dovetails to what Rachel was just saying. There's something called uh, situational crisis communication theory, which developed, was developed by a gentleman by the last name of Coombs, C-O-O-M-B-S. And it matches Benoit's theory. And it shows that the most important thing is to be transparent. And that the most important thing is, as we were talking about a while back, is to, to stick to the facts that are that, that you can back up, that you can validate. And um, there, you know, the, the, the discussion earlier of, or the point earlier of, of, you know, are we covering things up? PR people don't cover things up, but what sometimes what we try to do, especially in a crisis situation, is shift the focus, right? Take the focus away from what's, a situation is bad, you acknowledge it, but is there something rectifying that you can find? Is, it, is, is there some way to frame it? Is there some way to position it in a way that makes something that's bad look a little bit better? And so, you know, one of the, the criticisms that I'm sure all of us uh, have heard before is that PR people are just spin masters, right? We spin a story. It's not true. Spin's a dirty word. And it's, it's more that we position and our role as, as PR advisors, as strategic communicators is to help our clients learn how to position a story, how to position it factually, how to position it truthfully, but how to position it in a way that it's understood because most crisis comes out of the fact that a story is misunderstood. So I you know, it, it suggest if you have a really interest in this, look up these theories. And again, it's um, the big one is William Benoit's image repair theory because he did a big, big study of, of how all of this works. Yeah, that was uh, William Benoit who gave image repair theory. So there's another question. I think this question is addressed to Dr. Pooja Arora. Uh, one of the students wants to find out that public relations and media enjoy symbiotic relationships. So what is your take on that, Dr. Pooja Arora? Yeah, I think uh, this is something that I spoke about in the beginning, definitely. Media and PR, they definitely share a symbiotic relationship they cannot survive without each other when it comes to media relations. I mean, uh, I've given examples of why a PR person requires a journalist, uh, you know, just to build up the relationship, just to have regular stories on the organization. 
so uh, i mean uh, that relationship like i said has been slightly deterred because of the pandemic because you know uh, the face to face interactions are not happening but yes if the story of an organization is strong then that relationship can still be continued okay um again uh, muskan has come up with another question and she is asking that how according to you has the pr influenced the way we are living in this modernized world is pr deliberately used to change the way we live or it is very natural for the changes to happen this is uh, again katherine for you i'll start off with this but i invite everyone else to chime in on this one um i think the role of the pr practitioner as as both Pamela and Rachel and, and Dr. Pooja have said is that we're storytellers. So what we help, what we do, we're really intermediaries, right? So we connect the media to the organizations that we represent. Our job is to help translate the stories that the organizations have to the media and their respective audiences. So we're sort of the intermediary. And that's why the greatest skill we can have to is to listen and listen with detail and then to be able to translate that into a story um you know when when you're approaching a reporter with a with a piece um i always believe that you don't pitch you place right that that's been my big thing and that you should never you should never put just put out a press release and send it into vaporware because you don't know where it's going to go or if it's going to go anywhere but you should look at every news story every broadcast piece that you do as part of your corporate brand and as part of that corporate that a puzzle piece within that brand that helps bring it to life and so what we do is we help communicate the brand the evolution of a brand in some ways and the nuances of a brand to different audiences by being storytellers so how we influence influence reality is by working with journalists and organizations to um expand the public's understanding of our clients uh do we influence reality no reality is what it is we can help guide our organizations or hopefully influence their publics which are the target audiences is what they're called in pr in the pr world to focus on different aspects of our client but ultimately the client the audience has to make their own judgment about what reality is and what the story is and truly what matters to them and and again Rachel and Pamela and, and Dr. Pooja please feel free to chime in on this one so uh, guys would you like to add on to this Dr. Pooja Pamela and Rachel yeah yeah any one of you who want to add something to this okay so uh, uh krishna pandey uh, can we move uh, further because uh, we are i mean this is a long session now so i, I think we should have one or two questions if you permit mm, i think i think not more than one question okay then i'll take uh, i'll combine two questions because yeah. it's from the students and uh, more or less i mean they are very easy to answer also uh, one of the student or i would say mr samuel he wants to know why do we need to be polite during pr and also that what advice would you like to give to students who want to pursue career in pr this is from uh, shruti pandey hold on i'm going to i'm going to chime in here right now you need to be polite because your job is to connect your job you are the intermediary between an organization and the media and and more importantly in many cases like you're a public spokesperson right um i I've, i've worked for three large corporations um and in a lot of smaller ones and in many times I was the person that talked to the journalist so you need to be polite or people aren't going to be nice to you um you know I I'm always a believer and you should treat people in the way that you yourself would like to be treated so that's why one of the things I always tell my students is one of the key like skills you need to have as a PR professional is to be humble and to be understanding and to be patient and I think you know this career comes down to kind of three p's patience perseverance and persistence and um and so my advice is that um if you're thinking about having a career in this industry that you think about who you are as a person and if you have humility and you have understanding and you have grace but you also have persistence 
and that fire inside to, to see a story through, then it's the right industry for you. You also have to be a good writer and you have to be well-spoken, but it really, it, 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 there's a drive and a motivation and a passion that you have to have. My, um, and I don't know how, how Pamela and Pooja and uh, Rachel feel about this, but I'll never forget the first time I saw a story of mine appear in the Wall Street Journal. And, you know, the internet was out and I was up at 12.01 a.m. And I, I, I was in New York, living in New York and it appeared and I got a knot in my stomach because I'm like, oh my gosh, it's there. Because it, the thing in PR is you never know if the story is going to run until you actually see it in print. And I remember it was like 12.01 12 a.m. And my husband's like, what, what are you doing? I'm like, wait, shh, I'm reading the story. And, and I read word for word, line for line. And it, of course, it was a long story. So this took a while. And by the time we got to the end, I had a huge sigh of relief because it was a good story. <laughs> and so all that time, all that energy I had put into doing it really paid off. But you have to be bold. You have to be persistent. You have to be patient. You have to be humble. And you have to be kind or else you're not going to be successful. I mean, Pamela, Rachel, Pooja, do you guys agree with me on that one? Yeah, definitely, uh, Ms. Lantoni. Actually, you know, uh, uh, a lot of times my husband actually asked me that, you know, you do a lot of stories. Why don't I see your name in all those stories, you know? And uh, <laughs> that is something that I keep telling him that, you know, this is something that I do it for my own, uh, my own organization. I, if I empathize with them, I understand what their story is. You know, it's it, the, the feeling is of, an, of, you know, being achieved or uh, accomplishment, you know? So that is the thing that I think is uh, uh, something that of, uh, uh, which is, I think, uh, which I feel is an accomplish for, uh, uh, so sorry, accomplishment for me as well as for my organization. Yeah. That's great. Well, thank you so much, though there's a long list of questions, but I now hand over to Dr. Manaswini. Mm. Dr. Manaswini? Um, I, I think uh, uh, the uh, Pramod Kumar Pandey is there to summarize everything, but before he summarizes, I will request uh, Mr. Amansani, Vice Chairman DME, uh, to address us all. Thank you so much. Good evening or good morning, depending on where you are. And um, it's been a wonderful session that we've had and um, I've learned a lot from it. And it's been really interesting to, it's been a very nice reminder of how important good communication is and what goes, in, goes into the making of good communication. So, um, so I think a very useful session for all of us and um, a very, very interesting session to cap off. Well, it's been a wonderful day for all of us. We've had a lot of things going on all day and um, it, it has been a day of, um, of celebration and um, as, as a society of, um, of introspection and also a day of resolve. So um, I think all of us have enjoyed this day very much. And um, like I said, a wonderful way to, to sort of end it for us. And I'd like to offer my congratulations to everyone of you who spoke. Uh, congratulations on your success so far and my best wishes for what I'm sure will be wonderful things that you continue to achieve in the future. And um, and thank you, thank you very much for having me and my best wishes, thanks. Um, thank you very much, uh, sir. Uh, uh, we had a great session and it's very difficult for me to sum up, uh, you know, so much of information that was coming from your side. I, I must say that it was like, uh, uh, you know, this one, one and a half hour session was worth more than many books. And I'm uh, already uh, literally uh, shivering, you know, while summing up uh, all that you have said. So I apologize in advance if I uh, may have uh, misunderstood something or uh, understood something out of the context. So I'll start. Well, the uh, session started with Catherine Ma'am, who started on a very uh, positive note and, you know, filled everyone um, uh, with a lot of optimism, saying that uh, the future is very bright in PR, um, as it is helping other communication fields also. So there is a lot of scope. There is a, a, a lot of uh, future. Um, she also told about how the job of PR has changed. She told us about the way pitching is uh, done, and it's not the same how it was done. She told us that uh, it's done in a very fast and furious way, where the pace has changed and has made things more difficult, more challenging, and definitely more enterprising. 
Uh, she also talked about how branding has gone from corporate centric to more uh, individual specific. And she uh, also told that how social media has changed the entire landscape of this communication. She told that how uh, social media, the rise of social media has made anyone, uh, you know, turned into uh, somebody who can develop a brand and be influential. Well, this is uh, what uh, we are in general. And now uh, we are seeing themselves as different from different segments. She also gave us some, uh, you know, very insightful statistics like 59% of PR managers are women, 73% uh, PRSA members are women, 75% uh, jobs are occupied by women. But at the same time, um, she also said that only 7% uh, uh, of the, you know, 500, Fortune 500 CEOs are women. So that is something uh, that is startling, that is um, um, shocking. Uh, but, you know, again, there was something very positive, and that is things are changing in a good way. Well, she also gave some advice to the young PR professional saying that you have to be humble. Well, that's a mantra for today. One has to be humble. One needs to be humble. I think not just in PR, but in any field that we are. So I think, you know, uh, being humble, it should start from, uh, you know, right at this point of time. And she also said, like, while you are humble, you also need to have strong and thick skin. So which means that she's asking everyone to be strong while being humble at the same time. She also answered some questions regarding social media. And then she said that the story, you know, uh, does not write itself. You know, um, the person who is doing the PR has to bring the best version of that story. So as a PR person, you need to bring out the message through social media, craft the message, and you have to be ahead of the crisis. Well, she was talking about use of social media for crisis management. And she said that um, you have to be ahead of the crisis at all points of time. Um, at the end, she stressed on uh, the diversity. She talked about cultural multi-diversity. And after that, we had an insightful session from uh, Dr. Pooja Arora, who told us about her uh, uh, you know, interest in PR and how it was ignited through her keen eye for interaction with people and then Gradually, she started developing uh, interest in the organizational behavior, and then that led her to take up formal education in the same field. Well, then she gave us a, a very beautiful uh, example of how PR managers are no more just the communicators, but they are storytellers. Like there is a general notion about PR being very dry in nature. She completely changed uh, the perspective of the people who were attending this a particular session telling that they are storytellers and at the same time they are the guardians because they are taking care of the brand well keeping brand uh, in news consistently in the good way is something that the pr people are doing so in a way they are storytellers and they are guardians at the same time well she also stated that the pr scenario has changed post pandemic as uh, you know uh, the storytelling uh, through pr is not just done in the traditional way but a lot of things are done now online she also talked about the significance of face-to-face -face communication and how media relations used to play, uh, media rounds uh, or uh, the uh, interaction with the media, the face-to-face -face interaction with media used to play an important role. But now post-pandemic that has changed. But again, I think it was beautiful of her to start, uh, to end uh, the entire note on a very positive uh, saying that, you know, things will change. Well, then there was one very nice thing with, that she mentioned and that was an acronym that she gave that was CREATE. Well, she gave us uh, uh, the mantra, uh, not just us, but the students, a mantra to, you know, imbibe in, in the daily practice in order to be successful in PR. Where well, she said the first is communication skills, which includes being good listener. Then she talked about, uh, you know, research being an important component of PR. Then she talked about how PR is earned media. Then she talked about agility as in uh, the kind of flexibility in the working style. And she also talked about timeliness, that is time management skills, which are important, not just for PR, but for uh, every field of uh, life. Then uh, she also said that the students need to understand that the future is extremely bright. We then moved on to uh, Pamela Shabi, ma'am, and she told us about her journey and then uh, that how her love for the antiques made a fall in, uh, you know, field of PR, then how she worked in the fashion industry, and that's how her journey began. And then uh, she talked about, uh, uh, you know, that how digital marketing had already, you know, paved its way even before the pandemic had uh, occurred or had taken place. So she said that it's important that we keep in sync with the advancement. So while she was talking about uh, uh, digital marketing already making its way, 
she highlighted that this world is uh, ever uh, uh, you know uh, you know it's very dynamic and then we also uh, always have to be in sync with these kind of changes we have to adapt to this kind of situation and that is why this makes uh, a, this is a very challenging kind of uh, profession well it's an exciting time for pr she also said that so i think that's one positive that you know we have been seeing consistently i think it's a very good thing for the students of pr and she also talked about how the digital landscape has uh, brought mammoth positive changes bringing in more opportunities well she was also asked about her biggest challenge when she said that uh, her biggest challenge was while she was working with the uk public health when um, you know she was uh, working uh, there was a sars breakout and um, she said that she was not much aware of the nature of this virus and Uh, a lot of intricacies uh, related to uh, the SARS outbreak, and that was the time when the world was becoming very interested. And so, at that point of time, she had to, uh, you know, very quickly assess the situation, get used to it, and communicate at the same time. So, this was the most challenging uh, experience, according to her, um, that she has cited. Then, uh, after that, we moved to uh, Rachel Lipson. Well, she also uh, started. Uh, uh you know her uh, uh you know journey in pr um uh, in the same way and she also gave a mantra for life and she said that you know life can be interesting only if we are pushing ourselves to learn and do something different and um, you know she said that she loved writing and that's what pulled her towards pr and journalism uh she started with fashion just like pamela mem like i said later moved to healthcare and then she moved to some big firms and uh, is now running her own firm providing consultancy to some a uh, big clients and uh, you know one thing that she mentioned was that the pitching the way pitching is done has changed now the pitching is done over twitter and email and much more well she was also asked about the challenges and she said that as a professional uh, the kind of uh, the amount of work which is to be done and the uh, you know limited time which is available that is uh, the biggest challenge of this profession but she says the things move really swiftly so to comprehend understand the client needs and to respond uh, in that limited time is the biggest challenge so you need to learn a lot in order to you know sharpen uh, those uh, skills in order to be successful and uh, you know on being asked about her uh, future plans she said yeah she wants to continue to grow her business and increase the client base and uh, she also mentioned that the post covid situation has changed many things and it has resulted in tectonic shift in the communication landscape and it's not just about selling the product but also about how you are helping the society so that was the gist of uh, you know all that was discussed which was um, uh, a, a lot i think you know uh, i mean i just cannot express through words you know the kind of experience that we've had and especially me when i was trying to you know listen to each and every word that was coming out of uh, you know the the four stalwarts um and uh, it's not just about the uh, pr that you mentioned it's also about the kind of inspiration that you gave us you know you you have inspired on this occasion of women's day you have inspired both men and women uh, you know equally and i'm sure there will be a lot of students who would now be seeing themselves as uh, you know future racial or future pooja ma'am future pamela ma'am and future katherine ma'am thank you very much with this i would like to request uh, rithvik sir to you know uh, give the vote of thanks thank you very much thank you for uh yeah it was indeed a wonderful evening here in india and uh, acknowledging the guests of the day miss katherine author of public relations the changing global landscape rachel lipson pamela shabi dr pooja arora i ritik ghosh assistant professor dmv media school am honored to extend my sincere thanks and gratitude to you all for enlightening us and providing valuable insight into pr and of course sparing your valuable time to be part of today's event i am sure all of us present here and the students everyone benefited a lot from today's discussions i also extend my sincere thanks and gratitude to the vice chairman dme mr aman sahani for gracing the occasion and for his kind words i would like to thank honorable justice bhavar singh the director general of dme dr ravikant swami director of dme too my sincere thanks 
to Dr. Amrish Saxena, Dean DME Media School, and Dr. Sushmita Bala, yet DME Media School, for you know uh, bringing forth this wonderful event. I thank all the faculty members of DME Media School and their students, both from DME and the ones who have joined us from the US and UK for being part of this initiative and the event. This initiative and the event was conceptualized by Dr. Ambri Saxena, Dean DME Media School, with valuable inputs from Dr. Susmita Bala, who is the head of DME Media School. And this event has been a successful event accomplished with the support of the entire DME Media School faculty. Furthermore, I'm always grateful to our chairman uh, of DME Media School and uh, DME, uh, Mr. Vipin Sahani, and chairperson of DME, Ms. Kiran Sahani, for all the support in all the endeavors of DME Media School. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everyone out here. Thanks once again to each one of you for being a part of this International Women's Day celebration organized by DME Media School. Thank you all. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.